Hello everyone, this is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Very often, many radio amateurs need to power a 12 volt fan from a higher voltage. Supply voltages can be different. 15, 18, 24 volts and even 50. The most ordinary resistor can help us with this problem. With its help you can relieve excess voltage. But how to choose it? What should its resistance be for each specific voltage? After all, there are a lot of resistor values. And we need to make sure that the fans don't burn out. To find out what resistance the resistor is, we need to know the operating characteristics of the fan. This is the supply voltage and current consumption. In this case, at 12 volts, the fan consumes 170 milliamps. Unfortunately, very often the current indicated on fans is incorrect, so it is better to change it yourself. I supplied 12 volts from the converter. The fan consumes approximately 140 milliamps. The difference with the declared current is 30 milliamps. If you lift the fan so that it can suck in air, the readings will change slightly. Now that I know how much current the fan consumes, I can make the necessary calculations. In this example, I will take the supply voltage for the fan as 24 volts. But this calculation method will be true for any other voltages. In order for the resistor to absorb excess voltage, it must be located in series with the fan. The circuit supply voltage is 24 volts. And 12 volts should go to the fan. To find out what voltage the resistor should suppress, you need to subtract the fan voltage from the supply voltage. Let's do a simple calculation. From 24 volts we subtract 12, this is the fan voltage and we get 12 volts. These 12 volts must be extinguished by a resistor. We divide the resulting voltage by the current consumed by the fan. Only the current from milliamps must be converted to amperes, it turned out to be 85.7. This will be the resistance of the resistor. 86 ohm resistors are not produced. The closest rated resistor is 91 ohm, but I couldn't find one. So I took two other resistors and soldered them in series. The resistance of the first is 47 ohms, and the second is 39, the total is 86. I put together a diagram and now you can see what happened. The resistors were installed in series with the fan as expected. I turn it on, the voltage is 24 volts, but the current remains the same, approximately 140 milliamps. I'll take a multimeter and measure the voltage at all nodes of the circuit. Twenty-four volts come from the power supply. Of these, only 12.2 volts reaches the fan. The rest of the voltage drops across resistors. Here 11.5 volts. The calculations are correct, the scheme works, this is very good. But to make sure that it will work for a long time, you need to do some more calculations. We need to know what power the resistor we use in the circuit should be. See for yourself. A current of 140 milliamps flows through the resistor. A voltage of 12 volts drops across it. Let's multiply these numbers. This works out to be 1.68 watts dissipated across the resistor. It is dissipated in the resistor as heat. That's quite a lot of power. If you take a resistor thoughtlessly, it can overheat and burn out. 
Therefore, the resistor must be selected based on the power that will be released on it. If in my case I take one 2 watt resistor, it will work, but over time it may become like that. Therefore, here it is better to use a more powerful resistor, or take two like mine. Since there are two resistors and they have approximately the same resistance, the resulting power will be divided equally between them. Each of these resistors I used can dissipate 2 watts. Therefore, they still have a large margin against overheating. More resistors or a resistor can be placed next to the fan. If the heating is not strong, then you can place it in the front, on the side where the air is sucked in. Here the air currents are thinner. And if the cooling needs to be made stronger, then we install resistors at the back. As you can see, it is very easy to find the resistance of the quenching resistor for the fan. The same method can be used if you need to power any motor from a higher voltage. At least 3 volt from 5 volts or 24 volt from 48 volts. That's all for today, like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ask questions in the comments if something is not clear to anyone and for now.